your intentions for yourself are way more powerful than anyone else's intentions for you. This is the Energy Within Podcast, helping you to embrace your weirdness, find the courage to be your true self, and fully step into your soul's purpose. My name is Carrie Jokala. I am your host. I am a Reiki master teacher, a fitness instructor, a wife, a mom to two little boys, and this is episode 149, and I better get planning for next week's episode because that's going to be 150, and I would like all of these milestone ones to be special because they all have been, and I want to continue that. But anyway, that's a totally separate thought. So I don't know how you've been feeling. My energy has been not off, but maybe waning a little bit. I've been sleeping in a little bit longer than I'd like to this last week. I've also had a little bit of physical pain going on, some back stuff. I had some issues with my foot <laughs> and it's mostly gone. I'm just kind of dealing with a little bit with the back. So I'm trying to figure out what that's about. <laughs> but I did have obviously a lot that led into the Energetic Confidence Masterclass and now getting ready to start the Soul Level Confidence Program. If you are listening to this on the day of release or perhaps the following day, you can still get in at the last minute if you'd like. So click on the link and it'll still be up there for you. If you have any questions, you can still reach out to me. But we are starting the official classes on Thursday, August 4th in the evening, 6 p.m. Central Time. So you need to get in before that if you want to join. So if you feel as if learning Reiki is part of your path, it's meant to be part of what you do, either for others or for yourself, but we start with the self in Reiki Level 1. And if you need or want to really work on building your self-confidence, we're going to be focusing a little bit on that as well, which is why it's called soul level confidence. So like I said, my personal energy has been waning a little bit and just kind of based on the time I have available to record, I wasn't quite feeling it yet. So I was scrolling through the list I keep of different topics to go through. And what stuck out to me today was talking about karmic hooks. And it's related to energetic cords, which I may have briefly talked about at one point on the podcast. I know for sure I did a video a long time ago in the Energy Within Facebook group. And I don't have anything specifically up on my website about it, but it's still something that is available that we can include in a Reiki session. So as I talk about this, if you feel this is something that you not only need, but would like help with, because you can absolutely do this yourself, but if you would like some help taking care of these cords, these karmic hooks, and also filling in the holes again with Reiki once they're removed, which is a very important piece. You don't want to just leave yourself wide open again. But all you would have to do is go to my website and just book a Reiki session. And there is a section when you book to fill out kind of what led you to the Reiki session and you can put in there that you would like to do a cord cutting. So here's the deal. We're going to talk about some cards that I pulled for you and then what these karmic hooks are, what these cords are, and what to do about them. So I actually just recently, finally, it's been over a year, <laughs> started using my fairy tarot deck, which was gifted to me by my Reiki teacher. And the reason I held off on using it was really just because I wanted to learn more about how to properly interpret these cards. And I still have a ways to go, but I'm feeling <laughs> more comfortable. And I'm kind of liking the readings that I'm getting from them so far. So I pulled three cards that are all about now. And we got the King of Wands, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Six of Cups. So the King of Wands, focus, 
focus, focus, and full steam ahead. Devote your energy and time to the task at hand. You're in a position of leadership and you inspire others with your enthusiasm. You may also receive advice from someone who excels at creative solutions. Additional meanings, an entrepreneurial venture, speaking in front of a group, the courage of one's convictions, and making a difference. Then the eight of pentacles, the general interpretation for that is that it is a very positive card as you enter the world of master craftsmen and using your skills to make the world a better place. So a continuation of the first card, basically, you will continue to grow and move forward in your financial and business affairs. I hope this is a reading for me too. (laughs) But then we also got the six of cups and the general interpretation for that is there may be some positive emotional memories coming up, but just emotional memories in general, Uh, reunions, visiting places or people from the past, people from the past popping up in your life. This card is generally positive if we don't stay stuck in the past. So right there, we're leading into these karmic hooks and cords. So the short version is that basically anytime you interact with anyone, there are energetic cords forming between you. And cords are not always negative energy or anything to be worried about. There can be cords that are created because of love. And the first thing to let you know is... You do not have to worry about accidentally doing anything to those cords. You can't do anything to those cords. (laughs) So when you go in to cut some cords, whether yourself or with anybody else, the cords that you need and want to keep will not be affected. (laughs) But what you do want to do is, first of all, intentionally protect your energy And that could include putting up boundaries. It could include asking Archangel Michael for protection. It could include doing a meditation and envisioning yourself protected in, say, a golden bubble or a a sphere of light or something like that, bringing your angels around you, directly asking God for protection, and then also intentionally cleansing your energy, which I know I need to do better at myself. <laughs> I always disconnect at the end of a Reiki session and a Kashuk record session. But what was interesting is my friend Aaliyah, who I've interviewed on this podcast before, she did an episode all about breath work and it, we might have talked about shadow work a little bit too. But she mentioned something just the other day about make sure you call your energy back from all of the people that you sent your positive thoughts and love and energy and prayers to. And that makes a lot of sense. I never really thought about that because we always think about these cords in a negative way. And it's not that you want to cut off (laughs) the good thoughts and the good energy or anything like that. But just in understanding that you can only give so much of yourself And you don't want it to continue to turn into a draining thing for you where your energy is being taken from you. Maybe that's the reason why you're feeling tired. So call back your energy. (laughs) You can do something as simple as an act of waving your hands across each other or shaking your hands, cleansing your peri spirit, they call it, by waving your hands over your head, wiping energy away from your eyes, nose, mouth, heart, stomach, and three times over your lower back. That is for guilt, shame, and remorse back there. Very important thing to note, I think. You can take an Epsom salt bath. You can wash your hands in cold water. Go outside and ground yourself. Meditate again to call your energy back or to release whatever has maybe attached to you. And I don't mean attached to anything bad any spirits or anything like that we're not getting into that (laughs) but energy that is being drained from you connected in a cord or a karma cook to somebody else that you no longer want there because it's not serving you so if you are resonating with the cards 
that you are either in a position of leadership or meant to be in a position of leadership, whether you're embracing that or you know it, but you're trying to deny it or push it off a little bit for you to fully continue to move forward and embrace that purpose, step into that purpose, you need to start taking care of your energy. And here's one thing I want to say about protection. And maybe I'll end up doing something specific on protection. There was a class that I went through on energy cleansing and protection, I think maybe even about this time last year, or maybe two, no, it wouldn't have been two years ago, it was last year. And I'm not sure that that's even available anymore from the person who did it. So maybe that's my signal that it's my turn to do something for you. So we'll see. I'm not going to make any promises on that right here and now because I have other things that I need to focus on. But I do believe that intentionally protecting yourself, protecting your energy is important. But I also believe that intention is powerful. And if there's something that's taking your energy and you no longer agree to that, all you really have to do is declare it. If you think someone's trying to send you bad vibes or you have someone who keeps trying to be in your life that should not be there anymore, I think that in most situations, I won't say all, but in most situations, it can be enough to simply ground your energy and set the intention that you basically do not consent. Your energy is yours. They may not have it. You do not want their energy. You do not accept their energy. <laughs> and that intention is way more powerful than whatever their intention is for you because your intention for yourself overrides anyone else's intention for you. And you need to own that. We need to own that more. In fact, I'm not, I don't know if I have too much more to expand on with this, but I was scrolling Instagram reels and came across one quote, a little scene from 10 Things I Hate About You, which was always one of my favorite movies. <laughs> and I quoted a lot. In fact, I even used a quote from it, an audio from it in a reel I did on my original Instagram page a long time ago. Maybe I'll repost it. But then I started scrolling, specifically looking for more quotes from that movie to see what else was already on Instagram. And I came across one that I forgot about, but it's a good one. Why would I live up to other people's expectations of me rather than my own? I don't know. It just Maybe that's why I saw that quote today. <laughs> Your intentions for yourself are way more powerful than anyone else's intentions for you. But the thing about the cords is, like I said, they're always happening. It's just a natural thing. Any interaction is going to create some sort of a cord. And I don't, I don't know. I have a thought that maybe some of the ones that are just tiny cords that form in brief interactions, maybe they do disappear by themselves. But it could also depend on the other person. It could depend on how your interaction with them went, how long you continue to think about it, if it leads to anything else that happens for you in your life, and whether that serves you or not. And especially think about interactions on social media. And I honestly feel like even reading comments, <laughs> especially if it's on a particularly polarizing post, say that three times fast, <laughs> that that can drain your energy. I've felt that before. I've gotten lost in comment sections before where I don't leave any comments, but out of maybe a morbid curiosity, I continue to read them just to see what other people are saying and arguing about. But I notice that drains my energy and I try to get myself out of it as soon as I realize, like, why am I still looking at these? This isn't doing anything for me. This isn't helping me. It's only bringing me down. And I'm not adding myself to this conversation anyway. So why am I even here? <laughs> But there can be hooks and cords that form just from doing that too. So you need to cleanse your energy again, maybe reground yourself and fill that energy back in, fill those spaces back in with more positive, more high vibrational energy. And interestingly, something that was brought up in the cleansing and protection masterclass that I was a part of that I was a participant in last year I remember someone asking if you can form karmic hooks with yourself. 
And I believe the answer was yes. And I have thought a little bit more about it as well. And one point that was talked about was if you are maybe setting goals for yourself, making promises to yourself that you don't deliver on, you're putting a karmic hook in to yourself because you're not living up to your own expectations. But to go a step further, I think we can also form cords and these karmic hooks to past versions of ourselves that maybe we're part of our comfort zone and we've either started to shed or have mostly shed, but we're afraid to let go all the way because it was a comfort zone, because that was us. That was who we knew. That was who we are. And change is scary. Change is hard. But in order to continue moving forward, we have to be brave and cut those cords so we can fully become the butterfly that we're meant to be. I keep seeing butterflies again, like today specifically, a butterfly, a monarch butterfly flew right past me and was circling all around when I left the house earlier. So the moment I stepped out the door, there it was flying right past me. And then the kids came home later that morning from grandma's house and they both had these giant frosted cookies and Teddy's was a monarch butterfly. (laughs) So there's some major transformation and change going on here. But if we want to, like that Six of Cups card says, move on from the past. We don't want to stay stuck in the past. We need to cut these cords. We need to get rid of these karmic hooks. And if you're cutting a cord to someone who is not you, it's possible that they may, maybe they have not been in your life for a long time, but you still keep thinking about them. You like to stop those thoughts. (laughs) When you cut those cords, they might somehow show up again because they may not realize what's going on. You don't have to tell them what's going on, but they might feel that pull and they might start to think about you and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hey, hey, (laughs) and try to put that cord back. And that's where you have to go back to the protection, setting the intention that your energy is for you and you get to decide who gets to be a part of that energy and how much of it they get. I'm not saying be selfish and rude about it by any means, but be conscious and aware. You cannot give what you do not have. So you cannot just be in a constant state of giving and you don't have to be okay with people draining your energy and taking advantage of you either. So you need to learn boundaries. Maybe I should bring the boundaries masterclass back because we never actually got to do that. (laughs) It was something I wanted to put together. It didn't run, but I may have jumped the gun on it when I first tried to run it. So maybe it's time. Maybe that's coming too. Maybe it'll be a boundaries and energy protection masterclass. <laughs> but you get to decide. That's the main point. And you also get to decide when these cords are done. So if there's someone or something, some event, some situation, it doesn't have to be a person. It could be a past version of you. Whatever you need to unattach from, detach from, (laughs) proper English, (laughs) this is your sign that it's time to cut those cords. And like I said, I want you to know that you can do this yourself and it can be as simple as setting an intention. But if you're having trouble and or you just know you want the help and you know that you want the assistance in drawing in the Reiki energy, the universal life force energy, the God source energy to fill those holes up that are left by the cords, I would be more than happy to help. And all you have to do is go to my website and book a Reiki session and tell me in the description box that you want to cut some cords. And we can talk about it more during the session. You don't have to explain everything in the box. But make sure that that's the other thing that you do. If you do want to do it by yourself, don't skip that step of filling those spaces back in. You don't want to leave yourself empty and open. Fill the spaces back in and then put up the necessary boundaries. Do them with love. Put the boundaries up with love, but start to learn what they are. Start to learn what you need to do to keep yourself on your path and not allow anyone to take from you without 
your conscious permission. We give subconscious permission all the time when we let people overstep our boundaries. So start being more conscious of your energy. Simply making that decision could be enough. Starting to do regular meditations could be enough. Ooh, maybe there's a meditation to do there. I have a couple coming up. I promised an emotional strength one a while ago that I haven't done yet. I had another one pop into my head the other day for opening your throat chakra, which I think is going to be pretty fun, but I have to put a little bit of extra work into that. And maybe there's something here with setting these intentions and the boundaries. I'll have to think on that. (laughs) If you have ideas or thoughts, let me know. So I'll keep this one brief because that's really all I have to say about it. These karmic hooks and these cords exist. They happen. They are okay until you say they are not okay. And again, you don't have to worry about the cords that were formed with love being cut, but rather the ones that no longer serve you, the ones that are draining from you. Those are the ones that are even available to be cut. The other ones, I don't believe you can, even if you thought you wanted to, (laughs) because your soul knows and will guide you there. And the last little piece, these cords can be anywhere. I've seen when I've cut cords for people, all different types of cords, all different sizes, shapes, everything from an actual cord or a rope to chains to barbed wire. And I have seen them in every chakra. I have seen them across people's entire body, multiple cords, because they give so much of themselves all the time. And then these people are still connected to them and they're not cutting that connection. (laughs) So this is an important step that maybe I haven't talked about enough. So that's where I'll leave it. Let me know if this resonated. Let me know if you have questions. Make sure you jump inside the Energy Within Facebook group. I, at the time I'm recording this, I have yet to officially announce anything or decide if I'm able to. I would like to do something for the Lionsgate portal, which is on August 8th. But I don't know if I'll be able to do it on the exact day. I would like to try because that's the peak. But supposedly this Lion's Gate is open through the 12th. So I'll take a look at my calendar and see what, what we can do, what we can make happen. So stay tuned for that. If this episode resonated with you, if it made you think about anything a little bit differently or awakened something in you, please share it. Go ahead and take a screenshot or do a screen recording, share it to your stories, tag me and let me know what stuck out to you. And always, of course, feel free to reach out to me individually, comment on the posts, help the word spread so that more people can be drawn to this podcast. I love all of you so much. Thank you for being here and I will see you next time.